In today's episode of the Photo Nerds Podcast, we are back from a break and we are discussing DSLR versus mirrorless cameras and trying to decide which is best. We're also looking at what makes a picture the best one we've ever taken, along with a few missed opportunities. Don't all agree at once, like. <laughs> That's it, go. Say that again. <clears throat> we're recording. Okay, right. are we on? Yeah, so we're going to go three, two, one, and then who's going to introduce us? I'll do it, go on. All right, go on. Three, two, one. Uh, welcome to this week's um, podcast. I feel as if I need to say that in some kind of voiceover voice. But uh, it's because yeah, we've been away, isn't it? That's why. Yeah. It is. Yeah, we'll be, we have been away for quite some time. What three weeks? Four weeks without putting a podcast out? Yeah, it's called being life busy, isn't it? It's uh, not easy getting this to come together, though, is it? That's <laughs> <laughs> well, we were supposed yeah. to be here last week, but I let the guys down then, and before then, I think it was just Adam constantly letting us down. <laughs> <laughs> It's my fault. <laughs> yeah, so welcome to this week's vlog. Um, Adam, of course, and Paul, and myself, Gary. So let's crack off with... Um, crack off. Crack off. <laughs> crap off. You're starting off by cracking off. <laughs> That's audience retention gone, <laughs> isn't it? It's just live. It's just, it's just live. Can we edit that? Uh, let's we... crack on. I need, uh, crack need on. Let's crack on. on. Got a question from uh, John Haswell, I think. It's quite an interesting one. Let's start off with that one. Um, mirrorless. He wants us to discuss mirrorless. Have we moved over to mirrorless? He, for some unknown reason, seems to think that most people have moved on to mirrorless already. And it's almost like the question, you know, who still uses digital SLR cameras nowadays? Who? Yeah. yeah. Just find that a bit. I do. And I uh, moved over to mirrorless uh, a little bit and then moved back again. So... <laughs> It's what 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 are the benefits of mirror? So, what do you think the wh why are people? What do you think? What there's a force, isn't there, moving over to mirrorless? It, yeah. it does feel like that. So, I understand what John's saying. Why though? Why do you think that is? In, I, in theory, they're lighter. I don't get it because they're not that much lighter. So, no. uh, uh, I understand the theory behind it. Uh, uh, they're certainly smaller F physically. They're smaller. But then, because what makes up most of the weight with any unit is is your lenses anyway. So there's got to be not, glass in there. That that medium format camera you had that were, that was mirrorless was really heavy and bulky. Yeah, but can you imagine if that medium format had a mirror? It would be huge, wouldn't it? Like if that had, because it was a, it's a big old sensor. Like if you had a mirror mm. flapping up, it would it would sound <laughs> it's like a technical like, term <laughs> flapping so, up. Yeah. It would it would sound like. Thunder, wouldn't it? I think it's yeah. I mean, um, rapid fire is another another fantastic one. So I imagine for sports photography, yeah. you know, because some of these things can really belt out hundred frames per per second and so mm. on and so forth. Some of them are obscene. Um, but okay, the horses for courses. Yeah. Still, having said that, though, if you go to a sporting event, you still don't see any professional photographers using mirrorless cameras. Yeah. Is it our case of Emperor's New Clothes? I mean, you were talking about the, the lightness aspect because that's the one that seems to be bandied about a lot. Now, for me personally, if I want to save four or 500 grams on a system of cameras, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go and lose four or 500 grams in weight. It's like... We've uh, all got four or 500 uh, grams. Yeah, so I've got a lot more. <laughs> to lose, haven't we? Uh, for yourself. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's that um, uh, thing with, with cyclists as well, road cycling. <laughs> People will spend an absolute fortune uh, to save 500 grams and they're, they're, all, they're, they're carrying I, I, extra two or three stones. I get it though, because I, I bought a, a carbon road bike so did a I. few years ago <laughs> and I knew it wasn't really going to make me faster. No. Have I you just, ever used it? <laughs> uh, but <laughs> just so that it's rapid. I've, I've lost weight. What are you on about? <laughs> this is, uh, this is uh, I've just cracking. started doing jujitsu. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it, it, I didn't need it. No, but I just wanted it. It's yeah. not like it's the, it's that kind of right. uh, capitalist consumption, isn't it? I just wanted the best thing I could possibly afford, and that's what I got. Yeah, and it's, yeah. You I, see, it, I, I think I, there's some of that with. With mirrorless, isn't there? Yeah. It's a new thing. It's new. It's not. It's it's slightly more exciting than the sort of fifteen twenty year old digital DSLR I've held. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's it's that thing though. Is is do you really want to for the, for an exciting thing unless you've got money to burn? Change a whole system for on the basis of what? I mean, if we're here with three guys who love love the genre of photography. Uh, 
can we give an honest opinion that's not Emperor's New Clothes as to why you would want to switch over? And that's what that's what what I struggle with. I know why, for example, I shoot with a DSLR camera. Uh, uh, and I know why I didn't like the mirrorless system that I use. Now, it was an old mirrorless system. It was an old, an old Sony. Uh, and I just didn't like uh, uh, the electronic viewfinder because I like to look through a real viewfinder when I shoot. Uh, and I didn't like the fiddly buttons on the Sony. And that's the reason I got rid of it. Not because it was a, a mirrorless camera. It was purely because the system, I didn't like the way it worked for me in my workflow. And the reason I like a DSLR is because it feels good in the hands. It feels substantial. And I can look through uh, and see my view when I'm composing. It definitely depends on what genre you're shooting as well, doesn't it? Because I think if you're a landscape photographer and your camera spends all the time on the tripod, I don't think it particularly matters what how it feels in yeah, the with your live view as much. on the back of the screen. Yeah. Back of the camera. Exactly. So it doesn't matter, does it? But I think if you're a person who wants the camera in hand, you definitely want that deep, slightly deeper grip, don't you? If you're mm. going to be holding it all day, particularly. Uh, I mean, I've been through a, a number of cameras recently, used a number of mirrorless cameras, medium format and the X-T3. And they're just, they're fine, but they're not offering me enough to move away, like you say, from my Canon system, which just works. And I, I, it just works all the time in all conditions. I had a problem with the, the medium format in the cold, uh, whereas my Canon has never... Did you have a problem with the medium format in the cold, or was it the camera that, that, I that just did I think it was possibly trouble. the lens yeah. and the focusing of yeah. the lens. Um, so but the, it worked in normal temperatures and then struggled in... That's minus five camera system, then, isn't it? It's camera system. I, I know wedding photographers who have moved over, moved across to the dark side, and they've moved across to mirrorless and moved back again mm. since. Um, Why is was, that, Gary? That Why about, did they move back again? It was about two or three, two or three years ago now. So I suppose it was mirrorless in its infancy, shall we say? And and they just found that that the cameras weren't focusing quick enough, especially when you you know you're shooting wedding photography. You know yourself, Adam. At the end of the day, you get one chance. And to have a camera that underperforms, especially in lighting that you, you're very used to shooting in when it comes to wedding photography, then you just can't, you just can't have that. No. You can't have it, that. It, it, it's, as I sort of transitioned into being a full-time professional over the last 18 months or so, and even as I started doing more and more video, the, I used to love tinkering with gear. And then as you become professional, you just need it to work yeah. all the time. Yeah. Mm things start to occur don't they just things go wrong with your gear and you it's so frustrating when you try when you your money is based on the fact of you performing with your that gear performing you just need stuff to work mm. much more than you need an extra little feature or sure and, and i think the, the the dslr that i've got now does that and i've had a few experiences with some of the mirrorless cameras where that's not been the case it's just either the controls are fiddly or it just doesn't do something or it fails at mm. times. Battery battery life is worse yeah. on mirrorless cameras because the sensor's always on, isn't it? Yes. Whereas it's not yeah. with a, a DSLR. And the EVF. I know that is, a, that, that is a comment or was a comment. I don't know if it's still valid with the Sony cameras that the battery life is not good on them. The argument is, is well, you're saving weight, you can carry more yeah. batteries, I suppose. But it's interesting what you were saying, uh, you, Gary, about uh, them switching back because focusing wasn't wasn't quick on them. Uh, I was talking to a lad yesterday who went from Nikon D810 to an XT3 and he uh, uh, said it was brilliant for landscape photography because you got the time to compose yeah. and you press the shutter. He said, but taking pictures of his kids and movement shots, he said uh, uh, it just wasn't good. For, no. for for that type of shooting, yeah. but I, then I don't understand in my ignorance why are people giving it a, a thumbs up for like sports photography? I think it might maybe it is to do with the sh the, the faster shutter speed. Mm. I know there are I saw a, a video the burst on, mode. Yeah, mm. I saw a video on of a um, professional motorsport photographer using a XT3 with one of their longer lenses on. Mm. Uh, and I think it was for that re that burst that you liked gave him what he needed. Basically. Sure. The, the, definitely, my experience the weight saving is minimal. Like it's because I had the with the XT3 I had the 16 millimeter 55 I think it was, and that that weighed as much as my 
normal uh, 24 to 70 lens and it's the, the weight saving was minimal but what I am interested in is the new Canon systems that are coming out I haven't used the EOS R yet but the, the, that, the, I think they talked about a 75 megapixel one coming <clears> out I think they've been, sort of the, I don't know if it's a rumour or they've announced it but it's, it <clears> seems <throat> to be in the pipeline but the thing that's attracted me to those Canon ones is those new some of the lenses that they've announced that 20 have you seen that 24 to 70 lens that they've talked mm. about which is about half the size all right a half the physical size of of previous ones right so the twice Canon, the price well potentially but i mean that that is a genuine weight saving if the and how have they managed that then uh, because you've still got the glass the glass has still got to pre- uh, perform as it needs to yeah i think it's that, i think is it the eos r is it a slightly larger uh opening isn't it right like lens opening so that you can get you can it can resolve higher resolutions can't it and uh, i don't know i don't know i don't know how the, the, i mean if they're going to make, make uh, the lenses physically smaller and then physically lighter <laughs> uh i mean they are physically smaller anyway the lenses i think it's uh, similar to the 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 do technology that they kind of have in some of their longer lenses right so they've got the do version of the 400 mil right. which is about half the, half, width, the width. half the length isn't it uh, physical length of the not focal length, the physical length of the actual lens. Um, but so, yeah, so some of the some of the lenses that they're announcing on the on the, for that EOS R system, mm. I think are quite exciting. Mm. Uh, so that's definitely something I'm going to look at. And it, if the, that 75 megapixel camera comes out, that could be enough to then think, right, it's time to make that jump now. Um, it might depend on the video features, which I use a lot on my main camera as well. So, but it's, it's about that's what it's about for me. It's about does does this system replace what I've got? Does it give me enough value? Over There's nothing what I've to entice got? us there yet. No, not I mean, really what it's about. There's, there's going to be a lot of people us. jumping up and down who've got mirrorless systems, and what we're saying is we're not dissing mirrorless systems no, not at all. in the slightest. It's probably if you've the got, future. You've got a mirrorless system, uh, awesome. It's great, uh, uh, but and you're going to be saying yeah, but it is lighter. Yeah, it is lighter, and it's physically. Uh, a, a little bit smaller, but it's not that but, much lighter right, for it then, to be a let's, main. Let's, let's put it this way then. So, if say if you someone came to you who they're forty years old and they're just getting into photography, mm. and they say, "What camera should I buy?" I've got a budget mm. of fifteen hundred quid. What camera should I buy? Yeah. What are you going to tell them? I, I, I would personally be, <laughs> but, but I'm old school, aren't I? Because I'm a forty year old. I'm forty seven. There's a difference maybe with you twenty seven. Oh, old, but I know. <laughs> And then no, I don't look it. <laughs> but I would be saying go for a, 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 um, um, something like a second hand 800, Nikon 800, right. or a, um, a Canon, um, but a slightly older model. Yeah. Uh, and then spend your money on a, a, a couple of decent lenses for it. Yeah. Uh, but if, it, if, for example, if I was going to say tomorrow, because I'm a Nikon guy, right, go and spend your money on something, get a, a second hand the 800E, and get a 24 to 70 lens. Uh, and you're going to get that uh, combined for about twelve to 1,400 quid. And you've got an awesome setup. The problem is, is future-proofing. Uh, and uh, it, when mirrorless takes over, if it does take over, then you may say, well, I'm going to have to uh, uh, start to buy other lenses. But that's what I would say to go for, because it's going to do everything that you want it to do and more for... In the landscape photography circles, cheap as chips money. I think that was good advice. You buy in second hand, you can get some incredible Absolutely. deals. Like Absolutely. The, I've still got a Canon 5D Mark II, and it's, yeah. it's, 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 you can get them for 400 quid these days. Yeah. The, and that's the, a full frame uh, camera. Very good quality camera. Absolutely. Yeah. For 400 pounds. But a lot of people, and I'm one of these people, like like to buy stuff new. Mm. I don't, I, I would, I make or suggest people look. At mirrorless, mm. definitely. Like, right, because especially if they're not sort of looking to become a real serious enthusiast, mm. they, they, because the, the the size does offer something. I think that's one of, one of the benefits I think of mirrorless is the is the less conspicuous, aren't mm. they? If you've got a nice looking Fuji XT three, mm. yeah, good for street photography. Yeah, exactly. And it's but people. I don't think people go headlong into one genre of photography mm. when they're first starting out do they they're kind of yeah having a the feeling the i i, I have landscape. i have a bugbear with that just a very slight bugbear and um and the one bugbear i have is if you get paid to do a job as a professional you at least have to turn up looking like a professional 
if you've got a camera in your hand that looks, I'm not saying it looks like a toy, so I don't want to sound quite disrespectful about this, but at the end of the day, if you if you turn up with a fairly decent sized camera that looks bulky in your hand, something that a guest doesn't own, mm. own then you at least you're at least halfway there to looking like a professional. Yeah. So when you not- turn up with these Fuji XT ones, the brilliant cameras I've used them and they're great, but not on the professional side because all of a sudden it, it's swamped in my hand. Yeah. And I no longer stand out from everybody else that's Trouble is, it's, it's not the size, it's what you do with it. <laughs> no, abs- absolutely. I think, I, think what, 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 I think you're right. I think in a professional setting, such as weddings and, uh, and even maybe uh, your, uh, what they call paparazzi, big cameras look good. Uh, but you were talking about enthusiasts, but that's a really good uh, question because if you're an enthusiast and you're an all-rounder, so you take pictures of your kids and you're also a landscape photographer and you like wildlife, then a lot of people have contacted me and talked about bridge cameras. My uh, father-in-law's got a really nice Nikon bridge camera, which shoots raw. The optical zoom on it is crazy. You can yeah. shoot an Airbus at 38,000 feet, 35,000 feet, and it's pin sharp. Uh, and for the genre of photography which he does, which is a mixed bag, which is shooting wildlife in these little hides that they sit in, uh, and there are guys there with the Nikons with the huge lenses, and he's getting just as good pictures to my eye really? as they are. And his camera cost him seven or eight hundred quid, <laughs> and it'll does everything. Yeah. And uh, uh, what I like about it is, there's a lot of them don't shoot or didn't shoot raw. Yeah. But now you've got the ability to use that. So if you say just to an enthusiast who doesn't want to carry loads of different lenses and have the faff of changing lenses and stuff like that, it is an option to them. Maybe it's a bridge too far for your landscape photographers who want to get in landscape photography because we maybe think, well, I've got to have three lenses and I've got to be able to change them and stuff like that. But I think one of the things is it's get, they're all getting so good now, mm. but there is still, there is still a, a definition in terms of camera quality, I think, between what we might consider an enthusiast camera to a professional camera, mm, mm. but that that that's get that bridge is getting smaller and smaller all the time, and the the, the camera quality, companies yeah. are blurring the, the lines as well, aren't they? Because they want to sell the best camera mm. they can for the most money. Yeah. <clears throat> but the Fuji XT3, I know there are some professionals using it, but it's not priced as a professional camera, is it? It's like no. it's an enthusiast's price point at mm. fifteen hundred quid or so. Because as you start getting into the professional type mm. cameras from the sort of D eight fifties and your Mark, Canon five D Mark fours and Sony whatever the yeah. mirrorless two two and a half grand isn't it yeah, yeah you get that's you're getting up into that kind of price point aren't you and then even further for the the sort of five four five grand cameras yeah. it's, it's what we mentioned before it's lower diminishing returns though I mean as I say you spent said uh, the XT three fifteen hundred quid you can get as I say the D eight hundred E and and the twenty four seventy lens for less than that and you've got a, a really cracking set up but uh with um the positives of uh, if you like shooting dslr but you know if people are coming into the uh, to, to to the enjoyment of photography new it's very very difficult to advise anybody i mean you've got to go haven't you to the shops to the camera shops and that's the beauty of uh, 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 actually physically holding the camera in your hand yeah i just think people just naturally assume because it's a newer technology they're buying into either something that's going to future-proof them or mm. or something that's better than having an old camera. It's like it's like they're comparing it with a, a new car with an electric starter mm. motor from an old car with a wind-up on the front. You know, and it's not. It's completely different to that. Mm. It's does, definitely... Does that make sense? It, it is, it's, it, but it's fashion and it's trends. Yeah. You were mentioning it. I mean, I was talking to the lad yesterday again and we were talking about lenses and you can pick up really good Carl Zeiss um, uh, prime lenses on eBay for a couple of hundred quid and the glass is better than anything that's being produced today. And the reason it is, is because it's old, so-called old tech. That's what. That's the thing with, there's a lot of people still shooting film, isn't there? Yeah, and, absolutely. And still yeah. creating some amazing pictures. Absolutely. And it's, it was a, it's not, it, it's down to the camera companies to convince us that we need this new gear, isn't mm. it? When in actual fact, probably a lot of the time, we don't like no. it's, well, it's no. like, we were people were taking pictures people were taking great pictures from the very first camera that existed Absolutely. weren't they <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and that will continue whenever we've 
whenever we're all shooting on some sort of device that just looks like that. Mm. Yeah. And we've all got we've all got the best camera in the world in our pockets Absolutely. at all times. I mean, we mentioned off camera, and we just touched on it there, that you had a road bike. I had a road bike, and I had a, you won't see it looking at me, but I used to do a lot of mountain biking in me. Yeah, you're right. We can't. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thanks, we'll, Gary. We'll take your word for it. You're meant to be a mate. I uh, used to have uh, a motorbike. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely can uh, tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to punch you later. Uh, but I, I, I fell into that trap, uh, the latest and the greatest. And it's one of those things that um, you'll, you'll – what think that buying the latest thing will make you yeah. a, a, a good photographer or a good cyclist and it really doesn't you know we should take people, our own advice shouldn't we because yeah. we're sort of saying if we're talking about cameras yeah yeah buy second hand get the but then in all other aspects of life mm. we're going and buying the, <laughs> the newest and the best well i'm we? actually downsizing my cars at the moment and buying <laughs> old cars and replacing the new ones because i've learned the errors of my ways but um you know it, I, i've got the uh eight what is it which one's what, my new eight cat new camera a50. I think so, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Uh, and I've got the 800 uh, body. And there, other than the screen at the back, I can't see any difference yeah. in photographic quality. Well, let's, let's talk what about the burst rate then, because some of them are quite obscene. But I mean, I've got a camera that, that shoots 17 or 18 frames per second. Now, if you think about that for a second, if you go faster than that, mm. you're in video, movie territory. Video is 24 and 25. That's full HD video, 24 and 25 frames per second. Yeah. But so, that, that's what people are doing. Well, wildlife so many cameras do that, don't they? Yeah. yeah. People in wildlife photography, they've had to change the rules uh, because people were shooting 4K video and taking the still off it yeah. and sticking it into competitions. Where's it going to stop? You know, where where are we in landscape photography? You could actually set up your well, camera in 4K. I've always wondered, though, when you if you go on, like, one of the... If you go to a popular wildlife spot, like the Farn Islands, mm, yeah. and you get, on the, you get on these boats. Yeah. They're, they're, they're brilliant tours, aren't they? They're yeah. Well worth doing. But you get on these boats, and there's a lot of other enthusiast photographers, and they pull out these 500 mil, 10,000 pound lenses mm. attached to some sort of, like, big body. <laughs> mm. And it's just... <laughs> like just constantly isn't it yeah and I'm, I'm thinking like i've shot like maybe i've done like maybe three or four, four bursts yeah and i'm thinking like you're gonna have thousands of yeah. pictures to look at like how yeah. how do you have the time for well that? but they'll get one <laughs> we'll get one out of a thousand it's just you, like you don't need that burst rate though. Like you, you get, I was say, know. I'll have to show you guys that that, that um, uh, Nikon Bridge camera of my father-in-law's. The pictures, the images that he gets, uh, at crazy distances, and they're absolutely gorgeous. And I don't see why that ten grand lens. And I'm sure I'll get shot down by the wildlife photographers that do. Uh, what much of a difference it actually makes? But you know, we were going to uh, uh, mention in the future about for where we see the future of landscape photography. Can you not see soon that all that people are going to do is set up a camera and shoot in 4K video and then review the video and find the best image that they can get? Yeah, I mean the resolution isn't <laughs> is still isn't there, is it? But not I think quite. We're, we're definitely heading in the, yeah. in that direction, but. How often do you need that burst rate? What like 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 it just goes back to what I was just saying. Like so the so the, the sports photographers sat at the side of a football match, boxing. I, I think imagine. fast action but, sports, but they got motorsport. But they got great pictures twenty years ago. Mm. You know, like, it's not like I, I think it's it's a no. We forget that. That's so it's a, true. It's a problem that the camera companies are creating. creating and convincing us that it exists when mm. the, the, it doesn't. Like, there's, no. there's been great wildlife photographs shot on a Canon 5D Mark II. I, I yeah. got my own. Like, yeah. it, only had, it only had one of the cross-point focus points right in the middle. Yeah. And that's all I used. And it, you st I still, uh, yeah, I got a lot of shots that didn't work. But Well, I went to a, um, a, a rather large photography seminar, and this must have been 10 years ago. And they were talking about the future of photography, and it wasn't mirrorless then. Mm. What they were talking about is pretty much what we've already discussed, in that if you imagine setting up a bride and groom together, and you ask them to do a bit of a dance, put their hands and so on and dance and just do all this. How does the dance go? Which doesn't really really look good when you're listening to it on a podcast, <laughs> but I'm actually moving and a shaking and a grooving Gary was right just now. doing some real nice... Some <laughs> no, but so if you've got a shapes. couple of doing a, a dance like this, then basically when you took a picture, it's almost like that awful thing that, that Apple does with that live picture when you take a picture and it oh, records like a few seconds no it's disgusting <laughs> it just dates apple but basically what it was was you pressed the button and held it so you're almost like videoing them dancing for five seconds yeah but then you upload the video let's call it a video for all intents and purposes then you move forward frame by frame by frame then when you 
arrive at where the hand position was absolutely perfect, where you've nailed it, you press accept, and then a raw file is pulled is off. created yeah. from that small video. Not yeah. just not a screenshot, but a raw file. Yeah. And that's what they said the future of photography would be mm, yeah. 10 years ago oh, yeah. for us professionals. Mm. And I have no idea what's happened with that. That's going to go full circle then. So just for thinking about that, in 10 years' time, that's the future of landscape photography, that you could do that. Then people are going to go want to go back to old school and it's going to be the tactile nature of actually right. doing d d uh, holding the camera and, and, and actually physically getting the shot. Because, yeah, you can do it that way but let's do something a little bit different. And that might be why people are going back to film Possibly. and also also buying vinyl, as we mentioned in the previous one. Um, but we, like, well, I think on the very first podcast, we said that the gear doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think there is some, some I truth in I, that. I, I don't. And what it'll be interesting what people think about me mentioning bridge cameras uh, uh, because uh, for me, we've mentioned it in the past, it is a lot of self-imposed snobbery with, with, with photography. And... I think it's awesome that people are going out with this new Hawaii P30 and taking shots with the phones. If it's going to get people out and enjoy the art of photography, yeah, I absolutely. couldn't care less what you use, as long as you enjoy it. And if you prefer a mirrorless setup, get a mirrorless setup. But, I mean, we've talked about weight, and we've said that we don't see there's that much difference in weight, because people listening or watching may be thinking about transitioning yeah. over. We've talked about the negative of uh, uh, um, battery life with... Um, uh, some of the mirrorless systems anyway. Uh, and we've also talked uh, about that one of the advantages is the burst mode, but that is not um, uh, something that we uh, really worried about with landscape photography. Mm. So what other positives and negatives we can see? One of the big ones I don't like, is, is, but it's a personal thing, is, is, is EVF. And even now they've come on, I still don't like it. Yeah, but I, I, think, I think that's the biggest thing for me. That's the, mm. that's the biggest turn off. Mm. For me, you know, when you buy oh, <laughs> a kid's camera and you've just got a square cut out and you basically look through and you can roughly see what you're yeah. taking a picture of, but you're literally looking through glass. Mm. Okay. I would prefer that if mm. that was included mm. into a mirrorless camera than actually picking up a screen, a little mm. tiny HD monitor yeah. that just doesn't work. Doesn't work mm. well under low lighting conditions. It doesn't work well. Um, I think what one, when I, oh, I've, I've mentioned that before on some of my videos, one thing that people do say is that it's good in, bright conditions right so you can although a viewfinder does the same thing doesn't it it doesn't yeah. worry me yeah yeah that's, yeah that you can look through it and you can <laughs> no yeah. but you can you can you can see the exposure so if you if you're if you're using the live view to help you with mm. your exposure yeah you can do that with the viewfinder mm. or the evf rather do you think the yeah. younger people who are tech savvy with lots of little buttons and stuff like that do you think they will prefer the feel of a, of a camera that does that? I mean, because like my 850 has got a touch sensitive screen so you can zoom around and do bits, but I still use the, the jockey wheel and everything on it because I like the tactile feel. Part of the photography for me is the tactile feel of moving dials and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think I think you... Too small for my, my big lumps. Me, me, me too. I mean, as I say, the, the, the Sony that I had, which was an old one, um, uh, I just couldn't get on with and because uh, i've got short fat stubby fingers and the press things and and, and I'd get i get the different... i get the impression that young people aren't going to care no, no. They're, they're going to grow up using that i no, agree I do everything and i they, agree and they, young they, people and they're going to think well <laughs> they, that that does fit in my hand mm. they're not going to care are they mm. like it's, it's, mm. so yeah. i think i think if you're a, 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 one of these um you want the tactile feeling of interchanging lenses and stuff like that um, but it's then, but it's almost like it would be more appealing to me mm. if the mirrorless camera was the same size, yeah, as my current yeah, camera, yeah. But if then it was the same size, so it fitted in my hand the same. But now all of a sudden you've gone from this, you know, and you know you're holding a piece of equipment, yeah. To now all of a sudden it's like I only yeah. just want to hold it with one hand now. <laughs> Does that but, make sense? But it, yeah. it delays the myth or belays the myth of uh, that you're you weight saving or space yeah. saving, which you're really not. Yeah. You are to a degree. But you're not enough to change systems from, from, from. from uh... I use a mirrorless camera now, but um, John's. Uh, I spoke to John, John Haswell last night, and he mentioned about. Um, he he asked me if I shot mirrorless because he thought I actually did because he wanted to find out because he genuinely wanted to buy. Is it the the Canon M50 because I think Amazon were doing a fantastic deal over the weekend, four hundred and fifty pound. He said, great vlogging that's, camera. That's awesome, um, but yeah, for a vlogging camera, I think that's that's 
what mm. he predominantly wanted to use it for. Mm. But he then asked me what the stills were like off it. And of course, you know, I'm not qualified to say because I've never used it. No. No. Um, so I'm will, not sure whether he's bought it or not, but I'm, I'm sure. Asked, I'm asked sure asked the stills to, will be great. Off it, to be honest, yeah, um, they are. They are going to be good. Mm. But uh, I think I think John shoots weddings as mm. well, right? So I'd just be very nervous about. Again, I'm I'm not really qualified to say whether they are or they aren't. So if you own one and you shoot weddings, please don't shout at me. Mm. Um, I, but from my past experience and listening to other photographers that moved to mirrorless and back again, they just said that the, the focusing was, was very slow, especially under low lighting conditions. Mm. And that is my Again, worry. I think it's, it's so genre dependent as well, because yep. uh, 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 so Fuji X-T3 in the landscape environment, you'll probably be absolutely fine with it. Yeah, but ta taking that cropped sensor into a, a wedding scenario, I wouldn't mm. want it. Like the, no. the extra depth of field or the extra narrow depth of field that you get from that full frame sensor yeah. makes a difference. I know people like people get upset when you sort of say that uh, a full frame sensor is better, but it definitely has an effect on the depth of field. Mm. Uh, when you're working in a tight pictures. environment, absolutely, there's yeah. no question. There's no question. Uh, especially if you do it, if you shoot in a wide angle as well, mm -hmm. like you'll get a much narrower depth of field on a full frame sensor and it was even it was even a bigger effect on the medium format yeah camera. so do you think that um going with a smaller sensor is a little bit more forgiving in the uh, landscape absolutely because a lot of, for the vast majority yeah. of the time you're looking for a big depth of field, that's right you? so, it's just, so. It, it doesn't matter and i think the the image quality you're getting from those sensors now mm. is enough mm. most of the time yeah um and the resolution is obviously enough as well. I still don't, personally, I, I, when I was testing the X-T3 over <clears> a significant <throat> period of time, the image quality was not as good as my yeah, Canon 5D Mark IV. You've, like you've, just, hit, you've, hit on something, like you've hit on something there, is if you go out and purchase an X-T3 and you're a relatively beginner landscape tog, and there are certain uh, uh, times where it's going to be more forgiving and produce a better overall sharp front-to-back image. That might be a really good reason. I think it's for I, some I, people to. You know, I, that's what I was going to say earlier. Like yeah. if you if you've got fifteen hundred quid to spend, I think you yeah. can't go wrong with that for yeah. T three. Like it does everything. Yeah, uh, and it does everything pretty well. Yeah, like, this is this is what it's it's, it's an all rounder. It's, I think the Canon five D Mark four is an all a really great all rounder as well. But it, yeah, it, when it was new, if you compare new to new, it's two three grand more than the X T three. Of course. Yeah. So it's you know, like that's and that that's the level you should expect. You should expect that fifteen hundred pound camera to be a fifteen hundred pound camera, Absolutely. if you know what I mean. So, yeah. But it does it all. Like it's, yeah. Um, That's what the, the lad said. He said because um, I've never used an XT three. He said, but for landscape photography, it's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Right, I think we've uh, we've done that. Today. Exhausted that. Well, but we you know what would be good because this is interactive. If the people who've got them, mirrorless. And so people can read in the comments why they've gone over to the mirrorless system. Yeah. Uh, and, and so people can glean more information rather than reading it in forums. I think that's the good go thing about photography. It's so, like I said, it's very genre dependent. And it's very dependent on what you do personally, isn't it? And what, where, whether you're, you are making money from your photography or not, or like what your intention is in, yeah. in terms of how many people you want to see your work. Like, are you just shooting for yourself? Yeah. And keeping your... Your, your image is digital or are you printing like it's Absolutely. all those sort of, it's so everyone's so different aren't they that it, it kind of there's, so, so there's a camera out there for everybody though so it's very difficult to summarize really what we think about the mirrorless technology none of us own one none of us yeah use, well i, I, I own one but i use it as a vlogging camera we've, we've, we've gone through pros and cons but my advice is go to a camera shop and feel it in your hands don't go and blow 1500 quid and then you get it and think these buttons are fiddly or my fingers don't work with a camera just go yeah. and try it yeah but I know, um, I know quite a few people that take uh, advantage of amazon's return policy yes as well <laughs> amazon's <laughs> return policy is absolutely yeah. is absolutely awesome <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know what you're saying it, you test it out for 28 days and send, and it, send back. it back yeah <laughs> no really? questions asked yeah. yeah yeah it's brilliant not that we're advising to do that but no. so, uh, some people do that yes no, no. Right, what's uh, it, what's the it. next topic gary so I think that was quite good, wasn't it? I quite enjoyed that. Um, okay, question number two then. This is probably a very difficult one to answer. What's uh, the best photograph we've ever taken? But that could be 
because the the quality, the timing, the conditions, or it might be a. This is a good thing about photography, though. It might just be a rubbish photog- photograph. When I show you a photograph, for instance, you might think that's rubbish, but the meaning, the backstory behind that photograph might make it my favorite photograph of all time. Mm. You know, that's the beauty, and that's really that's what photography is mm. all about, isn't it? It's not yeah. just about look at this. Will it win awards? Technically, is it brilliant? It's about the backstory. Yeah. So who wants to kick off with that one then? I'll kick off. Go on then. Uh, the reason, uh, the re- <laughs> sorry, the reason I'll kick off is um, uh, because I'm going to contradict myself because I've always, when I go out and shoot, I like to shoot possibly locations that aren't on the map yeah. uh, and your bucket list locations. And uh, um, when I went to the Isle of Skye, uh, I uh, decided that, Certain locations that I was going to shoot at, and one of them, one of them was the Old Manor Store. And I, saying you weren't going. To I, shoot I was there. going to shoot. You at. was, okay. uh, but then the Old Manor Store. If anybody knows, is is a steep climb. Oh, You've I only know. just been, haven't you? Uh, a forty minute <laughs> steep climb, and it was early in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I got there in forty <laughs> minutes. So I'm, I'm, I'm fitter than up. Um, and um, and I thought, re- do I really want to go up there? And I went up there, and it was a mind. Uh, altering experience it was such an awesome or inspiring scene that even now talking about it it's sending goosebumps uh, down my back and it was a beautiful clear day and that sun came over and lit everything up bright orange now technically people might look at the, uh, at the picture it's on one of my vlogs and uh, say well i've taken a better picture of the old man of store but You'll see the emotion on the video that I do, that that whole experience of experiencing that, and there was only one other person up there because it was really, really windy, was absolutely mind-blowing. And that's my favourite photograph, not because of the technical aspects of it, but the emotion uh, uh, that getting the image uh, uh, instilled in me. And that's why I love landscape photography, because uh, uh, when you get that, there's no better experience uh, well, yeah, is, but... I, I totally agree with you. What I often wonder, though, is does that does that translate to the viewer? So, like, I, I sort of talk about a fair bit about who who are you doing? Like, we say who are you doing photography for? Are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it mm. for the people? But well, m- most of us are doing it for ourselves, aren't mm-hmm. we? But there is you do want people to like your work. Mm. So when you get a moment like that, how do you? Or how do you, uh, I'm asking you, put like it's not rhetorical. How how do you actually convey that extra feeling I, to I, the viewer? Do you think do you think it goes into the actual work itself, into that image itself, or do you think it's through like any good art, it's through the addition of a backstory? Mm. Or I think with that one, I think it was clear how emotional I was coming down from from uh, the shoot, and I was talking to camera. And the emotion was there. It, it, because, was on a, it was on a vlog, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on a vlog. Yeah. Uh, 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 and I'm really pleased it's on a vlog for me and for my kids to be able to go back because every time I watch it, it instills in it. And then I also added uh, uh, some drone footage and uh, some music with a narration from from a guy called Alan Watts, who's a philosopher that means a lot to me. And the words that were on the vlog uh, prior to me shooting the video meant a lot. So the actual vlogging, uh, the vlog meant a lot to me, as did the image. And the image, it, 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 I don't know whether it's technically any good. I'm sure people have shot a lot better image. But that image to me will be one of my most favourites because it's like a piece of music that you listen to and it brings back that emotion. We'll have to link it up in the description, yeah. won't we? Yeah, so well, um, yeah. It. But, uh, and I know it resonated with other people as well. There's a, 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 a lad who listens to Photo Nerds uh, called Scott, Scott Hughes, uh, uh, who watches all three of us. Uh, and he has said to me on a number of different occasions, I still go back to that video and watch it because how you presented it with the music and also your emotion in it really conveyed what it meant to you. And that was a great honour. And I still, as I say, I feel emotional now talking about it. And it will always, but I don't think I'll top it, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, because because of the emotion. So whether or not technically it was perfect, I don't know. But, uh, uh, but it's, a, br- it's a brilliant it. place, yeah. And that that's not like you, because I think you've said in a previous podcast that what you don't like doing is photographing the, yeah. the obvious, yeah. But there are times when you know, case in question, yeah. 
the obvious. You just have to shoot it. I, Why not? I, I, Even I, if you stood next to a hundred photographers, okay, shoot the obvious shot, but then move on and work yeah. the composition, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes, you know, how can you go to the Alice guy and not shoot the old man as store? Absolutely. And every time I go up there, I've been so many times, but every time, including uh, two weeks ago when I was last there, straight up there, grab the normal shot and then, then, looked and looked and looked for another composition it's interesting you saying that because i also did the fairy pools and i didn't feel the emotion at the fairy pools no i felt the fairy pools uh, uh is pretty uh because it's got that beautiful backdrop yeah but I, I did mention it but i didn't put it in the video that it feels like any other river or any other stream anywhere else it's everything else comes together uh, uh and i didn't feel it at the fairy pools last time i went to the fairy pools though, I was glad it I was it was pretty cold it was in january i think and it was like horizontal ice daggers mm. like <laughs> stabbing you in the face <laughs> <coughs> so it, 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 made, it didn't make doing landscape photography very got some nice memories from it then yeah, it was hard <laughs> i remember turning my back to it and i had my jacket on and you could just hear it like stabbing you in the back with all these like it was, it was crazy i went to uh, the old man of store like you said looking for a different composition and what we did this time is you know when you go up onto that ledge where all photographers go i mean it's all worn out now on top of that ledge well if you look to the right hand side then you'll see there's a, another cliff, a mountain goes higher up. So we actually ventured right round the back and all the way up. So I've never been there before. And so basically you're right on top looking down onto the old man of store. It's a very, very different position, very different composition. I absolutely loved uh, the pictures I took there. I haven't done anything with them yet, by the way, but I took them two weeks ago. But it's a very different composition. Absolutely stunning. And even I was blown away by it. Brilliant. Um, and, but, but there's nothing wrong, you know, like, like say, if you go back to the Isle of Sky, I'm sure you're going to want to revisit the fairy pools. So what? It's been shot a million times. Who cares? I think that goes back to say, when we say that if we're shooting for ourselves. Is that why would... Absolutely. If, if, you don't, if you don't take those images, you kind of almost... You sh you're shooting for somebody else almost, yeah, aren't you? Not, but the, but also there's nothing on the Isle of Sky as a, as a, perf as a perfect example... That, that's unique anymore, unless quite literally you want to go hiking and you want to wild camp and literally, you know, go to places where nobody else has gone before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But then you need a lot of knowledge. And the chance that if you go up there for five days, you've got a handful, so many different locations you want to visit. And the chances are it's, they're the same locations as everybody else. And I really don't have a problem with that. Mm, I yeah. don't. Honestly, I, I don't. I don't. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. It, it makes I mean, you a better photographer. That, go there. Like you say, go to, yeah. the, go to the, the fairy pools. Okay, I've shot that now. I've got that. That's, that's in my bag. Let's now work the composition and try and find, you know, an angle or a different shot, maybe somebody that, that somebody hasn't got. I think, it's, shot I think it's really advantageous of people actually showing you where to go in Sky because Sky's that beautiful that everywhere you look, there's a composition in there. <laughs> what's your, okay. what's your favourite image? Um, my, mine is really what what launched my um, my career as a photographer, I suppose. When I joined the RAF, I was a bit of a rogue, but I joined a camera club. So we're talking about this is late seventies, nineteen seventy nine. I joined a camera club. Well, the, <laughs> Prince Charles <laughs> landed a helicopter and basically walked around our base. So as you can imagine, we all had to be there and on our best blues and all lined up. And of course, because I was a bit of a rogue. <laughs> My boss put me to the back. There's no way I was going to be put to the front. We could all just see Prince Charles as he got, uh, you know, disembarked from his helicopter and walked down and smiled. But I was the only one there with a camera because I was in the camera club. And it was my Practica MTL5, which is my, my first camera, my introduction to photography. So as he started walking down, I started taking pictures, right, of Prince Charles. So I'm a royal photographer now. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's official. <laughs> And Prince Charles clocked me taking pictures because nobody else was, and he came straight over. Well, you could have seen my boss's face because he came straight <laughs> over to talk to me just in case I was going to say something wrong. Obviously, I didn't. But not only did he come across, and I got a fantastic, really close-up picture of Prince Charles, he then spoke to me. Better still, it made the press. <laughs> and the headline was, The Snapper Meets the Snapped. <laughs> <laughs> And that was it. So really, um, I've still got the picture. I printed it out. And it's just it's just almost like a snapshot of Prince Charles while he was walking towards me. Uh, but I've obviously got the newspaper cuttings that go alongside. So that's what I'm saying. It doesn't necessarily have to be an amazing picture. Mm -hmm. It's it's the backstory very yeah. often, isn't it? Yeah. 
That's what that's, you, that you were asking, wasn't picture. it, uh, Adam? That's definitely true. Yeah, and that, it, that's more obvious, isn't it, mm. outside of the landscape genre? If it, yeah, it, in sort of documentary or portrait photography, that's yeah. The, the story is sometimes more obvious, isn't it? And, mm. Yeah, but even taking a picture and winning an, an award. I mean, if you're so chuffed. And so proud of that picture, then you've been recognised by your peers or by, you know, by the public, which was, which was uh, in your case, which is probably even better. Um, then you're going to stand proud, aren't you? I mm. love this picture, and it might not be to everybody's liking, but you know, certainly a lot of people did like that picture. So at the end of the day, it's the same thing. You can have that as a backstory as well, can't you? Yeah. I took this picture. I entered it into a competition. It won. The public thought I, you know, my picture was the best. Hey, what a great, great picture! Yeah. It's so true, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's so true. Yeah. So what's yours, then? Yeah, I mean, I, the, I think the picture you just mentioned was, is, is my water drop picture, isn't it, that sort of won that yes. relatively recent award. Yes. But I think the the thing with with macro photography, and it was when at the awards, yeah. uh, Rankin was there, and he sort of gave the opening sort of speech, and he, one, one of the things he said, he was like, love photography oh, it, was the, it was the it was the first thing he said i thought that's that's so good to hear like such a famous photographer yeah. just come out with that he, he meant mm. it as well he wasn't just from yeah. the heart. performing yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he said there's some great images with, that we've seen and all these he's like even the macro category <laughs> and i was like what do you mean by that yeah, yeah. Uh, i was like pick, I was pick like, your I was, ego like, yeah i'm like looking around and I was like, hang on a minute but kind of, it, 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 to, to not agree too strongly with him, when we're talking about the emotion of actually capturing the image in the moment, when I'm stood in my kitchen with little bowls of water and some food colouring, the actual moment of capturing it yeah, yeah, yeah. is not particularly special in, in what is essentially a very technical mm. uh, image to create. Although I think I don't particularly think the, the image that you see at the end is looks massively technical, but... It's a techni very technical mm. process to capture those images. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think that is... It's my favourite water drop image, def definitely, but not overall image. I think probably my my favourite image at the moment overall is the one from Sands End with the, mm. with uh, the, the wave... I knew you were going to say that. ...cloud and the yeah. sunset. Because uh, it obviously happened earlier on the, on the vlog. You sort of see it happen earlier in the mm. day before the sunset. It then went away and came back again. Mm. And even when it was there at the start of the day, it was similar to your experience. Mm. It's a very emotional experience. Because you finished the vlog, didn't you? Pretty much finished the vlog. And then you simply said, yeah, oh yeah. my God, look at this. Because yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd stayed for sunset. And then, because um, I, I think this, just with sunset photography generally, I, I think as a rule, I prefer it when you've got the light on the land still. Mm. So before the sun goes down behind the horizon. Yeah. Yep. I prefer the light on the land in my foreground and things like that for the most of the time. Mm. But that sun, the sky will explode during a good sunset, about 20 minutes or so after sunset, won't it? And yeah, yeah. So I'd, yeah. I'd finished filming the vlog. I'd finished on the beach, What got what I wanted, a nice sunset shot on the beach, then went back to the car um, and it just exploded again. Uh, so I was I was luckily still in position. I'd waited around in the car, I think. Mm. Um, and I shot it only sort of, 10 meters or so from the car so it was it worked out quite well but yeah i mean it was it was one and i, I called it once in a lifetime that was what i titled the, the image yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and i think it genuinely is like it's you do get sea fret quite often i've on, never on seen that, it on that coast but i've never seen that with it sort of going over the cliff like a wave with a really colorful sunset behind it that's i don't know, I'd, I'd be lucky if i saw something like that again but I knew you were going to choose that one, though. Yeah, I, I did. did. The emotion came through on yeah. the video, I didn't see I, well, I think I nearly cried on the video, didn't mm. I? I, th I thought the vlog was very good, actually. <laughs> I did, honestly. Yeah. Cause only because you could just sense it. You, you could just stand there and just not say anything to mm. camera. Yeah. And you could just sense yeah. exactly the emotions that you were going through at that particular time. And I just basically looked at it and thought, you jammy git. <laughs> <laughs> did did you, have you, have you, any of you two guys... Uh, almost got a picture but didn't and knew it was a once in a lifetime shot not that i can think of i mean <clears throat> there were it's, it's almost happened like there's a couple of occasions once in in uh in glencoe mm. i was when, when i was with um morton and we were filming i was filming and i there were the light was it was the weather was so changeable that the light yeah. was hitting them hitting the mountain and then going off again 
and going again and going off again. And it was all happening so fast. And I was kind of filming it in real time as well in one take. And then it sort of, it exploded behind me and I was still filming at the point and I wasn't looking. And then I turned around and it, 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 it happened again. So I managed to capture it. But on the video, people were saying, I was, sh- I, people, people who'd watched it were saying, I was literally shouting at the screen for you to turn around and <laughs> capture that image. Yeah. Um, I still got the shot, but that, that was a close one. And then the, sh- the, the image I got recently of the waterfall in North Yorkshire with the rainbows. Um, that I've, got, I've got to say, you've taken some stunning images, but that one I would buy and put on my wall. It's, yeah, it's I mean, gorgeous. I, I'm really happy with that one. Yeah. Like it, it sort of worked out really nicely but that I was again I was filming and I kind of had a feeling the sun was going to come round but then I didn't have my camera set up in time it wasn't that I was filming actually on that I just didn't have the camera set up in time the rainbow came and then the cloud came over I was thinking oh I because I, I couldn't really see the clouds because I was in the woods so I was thinking oh, I hope that comes back so I stood there for probably about half an hour waiting for the sun to come back out and when it did it was actually in a better place mm. so the the uh wow. the and rainbows came back you got I didn't three know, three rainbows yeah i didn't really know one. it was a double rainbow until until i got it back on mm. the computer because i couldn't see on the couldn't see on the smaller screen um, but i forgot to switch the sound on on the camera so oh. it kind of still got the shot yeah exactly like a shot before the video yeah so. the, the reason why i was asking is because i i've got one which i'm going to regret to this day have you yeah um i was at uh, lady bar reservoir and if you know lady bar reservoir the reservoir above that was the one that the dam buster squadron used to practice uh, all right. uh, the bombing runs for the dam busters uh and every so often lancaster will fly over uh with all the roads shut off and people in viewing galleries and stuff like that and i was there one day uh, taking a picture of the dam itself so i was pointing towards the dam and i heard engines and i thought that's not a, a light aircraft that's something bigger and it got louder and i turned around and the lancaster was coming towards me <laughs> and uh, my camera was on the tripod set up in manual mode i wish it wasn't if it hadn't been i'd have got the shot and i managed to spin it round and fire off a couple of shots and i've got the lancaster at a crazy angle but if I'd have heard it a few seconds earlier. I would have got one one of the shots that you could not buy because even the official photographers, when when it flies through, are off to the side, and mm. I was literally underneath its fly path. And I've got a picture of it, but it, it's not a, a, a picture I could hang up, and uh, it, it'll never happen again. That's a shame, isn't it? It is. That's a real shame. The <laughs> yeah. one that got away. The one that got mm. away. It does. It is good to walk around with the camera in hand though for that reason isn't it and <laughs> should have done not always have it on the track yeah, stuck on the tripod. not having manual yeah. mode <laughs> <laughs> manual focus um right okay is that what drawn? else have we got have we got another one how are we doing the time that we're at 50 52 minutes there. i think we'll call it a day on that then yeah, I think, I think so. that's covered. Some, we've covered some good ground there, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. But uh, just like you said, though, Paul, with the mirrorless, for instance, um, we don't own a mirrorless. We don't use a mirrorless on a daily basis. So if somebody does, maybe they they could share with us the reasons why they've moved and why they wouldn't go back. Because mm. I think that would really help our listeners, and yes. viewers. And I think that's the aim of this: is, is yeah, to help people uh, and get an, uh, make an informed choice. And the other thing is, as we mentioned, the more comments that we get and the more questions that we get for photo, photo nerds, uh, the more it's going to be interactive for everybody. Definitely. And more content that we can put out. Yeah, but also we talk it, about stuff they're interested in. But also, it's important for people to know that you know we're not just sat here as three know-it-alls. We're just simply giving our, in, in, well, our interpretation of what we think is right or what works for us. I think and you're not necessarily right. works for you. I think we're three mates having a chat about photography because we love it. And we're not saying that we're, our We're our definitely views. not experts about no. the inner workings of a camera. No, neither, are we? <laughs> that, that was shown on the last <laughs> ISO vlog. <laughs> Got caught out there. Apologies, guys. Um yeah, but we were okay. Let's not. Well, at go, least let's we're, not go. we're back, aren't we? That's like let's a, not go down that a little road. higher. Photo system. nerds is back. And we'll do our best to uh, keep it weekly. Keep it going. Well. Okay. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And, we'll and like see I say, you soon. questions down below. Yeah. Awesome. See ya.